So in this video, we're going to talk about matrices. Um, and in general, a matrix is a rectangular arrangement of numbers. Uh, these numbers that we speak of, these will be called entries. So when we talk about a matrix, uh, it's a very general idea. Uh, you can see four examples on the screen. Um, and to, to uh, categorize or to help in the characteristics of a matrix, uh, we talk about its size. Um, the size of a matrix will always be defined by the number of rows by the number of columns. Rows will run horizontally and columns will run vertically. So, for example, we've got row 1 and row 2, column 1, column 2, column 3, and then the size of that matrix would be 2 for rows and 3 for columns. So a 2 by 3 matrix. In the second example, uh, you've got two rows and you also have two columns. So this would be a two by two matrix. Anytime the number of rows equals the number of columns, we call it a square matrix. The third example, uh, here we have row one, column one, column two, column three. So a one by three. A matrix that has only one row is called a row matrix. And similarly, in our final example, uh, we have row 1, 2, 3, and 4, but only one column. So a 4 by 1 matrix, meaning it only has one column, would be a column matrix. Now, this really doesn't mean a whole lot to you right now. It's just some general ways to, to uh, describe matrices. Um, we're going to transition now into an application of matrices, uh, and that's solving linear systems by Gaussian elimination. So as we talk about Gaussian elimination, um, keep in mind we're solving here in this example a 2 by 2 linear system. Uh, and you have some, some familiarity with solving these already using um, different methods. One of those different methods was the elimination process. So as I introduce the Gaussian elimination process, keep in mind the technique of, of basic elimination from earlier courses. Now, to solve this using Gaussian elimination, the first thing that we're going to need to do is set up uh, what's called an augmented matrix. So the augmented matrix is just going to be all of the coefficients. So 4, 5, the constant 6, 1, 2, the constant 1. We'll put this in matrix form, and it's common practice to put a vertical line between the coefficients from the variables and the constants by themselves. So this is our augmented matrix. Now, we're going to use elementary row operations, ERO, elementary row operations, uh, to transform this into our goal matrix. Our goal in all of this is to transform the current augmented matrix into one that looks like this, where you can see you have a 1, 0, 0, 1 uh, to the left of the vertical line, followed by just numbers and, and more constants on the right. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you right now, that's perfectly okay. And once we finish working the example, you'll see why it's so important to have this as our goal matrix. Now, what I need to talk about a little more uh, would be the row operations. Uh, there's going to be three of them, and I argue that you already know them. Remember, Gaussian elimination is still elimination. So if I were to give you the original system and I were to tell you to solve it using uh, basic elimination, the first thing you would probably tell me to do is take the second equation and multiply it by a negative 4. Now, you can clearly see that it's an equation, so if you multiply it by a non-zero number to both sides, it's perfectly legal. And if you also look back into this augmented matrix, the 1, 2, 1 coefficients, those are essentially um, the, the numbers of that second equation. So if it's legal in basic elimination, it's got to be ba legal in, in uh, Gaussian elimination. So our first row operation says that you can multiply uh, a row by a constant. 
So you can multiply a row by a constant. Okay, now back to the original system here. After you multiply by your negative 4, you would do so so that you could add, eliminating the x's. So notice when you add the two equations, it's essentially the same thing as adding the two rows of the augmented matrix. So if it's legal in basic elimination, it's legal in, in Gaussian elimination. So you can add two rows. Now, the third one um, isn't something that's, that's as obvious to use in regular elimination, um, but if you look at the original system, uh, and I gave you that one to solve, and as the next problem, if I gave you this one to solve, would you get the same answer? Well, absolutely. The only thing that I've done is I've presented the equations in, in, a, in a reverse order. Um, you'll still get the same point of intersection. Um, it doesn't matter one bit um, in the order that I give them to you. Now, in regular elimination, that's, that's very trivial. But in uh, Gauss elimination, uh, it actually is pretty beneficial uh, to be able to interchange, interchange two rows uh, at any given step. So, uh, those are the three row operations we're going to need to use in order to transform the original augmented matrix into our goal matrix. Uh, so, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and clear the screen and uh, put the augmented matrix back up to the top, and then we'll run through how to do it for this particular problem. Okay, so we're back to where we left off. I've just cleaned up the screen a little bit. Um, so you can see our augmented matrix, you can see our goal matrix. Now, to perform um, the operations necessary to turn our current augmented matrix into our goal matrix, uh, we're always going to start uh, in the first column. And anytime you start a new column, you want to make sure you get the one in place. So for us, we would start in the first column, and we would want this entry to be a one. Now, we have a variety of ways of doing it, um, but it makes the most sense and, and keeps things as easy as possible if we simply interchange row 1 and row 2. Uh, that'll put my 1 where I need it. So, careful in the notation. We're going to take row 1 and we're going to interchange it with row 2. So, that's going to give us the first row being 1, 2, 3, the bottom row now being 4, 5, 6. All right, so um, still in the first column, still in the first column, once you get the one in place, then you want to get the zero, but you want to create that zero by using the one that you already put in place. So we want this entry to be made a zero by using the one directly above it. So we're going to take negative four, row one, plus row two, to get a new row two, which if you think back to the last uh, screen is exactly what we would have done using basic elimination. So the notation here, this part especially, tells you that you're only gonna change row two. So row one's gonna need to be the same. So let me copy that down. Now, in order to come up with row two, all of the entries directly above row two we're going to multiply it by a negative 4, and then we're going to add them down to row 2. So in the first entry on the second row, uh, we're going to have negative 4 plus 4, which gives us a 0. For the second entry, we're going to have negative 4 times 2 plus 5. So negative 4 times 2 plus 5 will give us a negative 3. And then for the third entry in row 2, we're going to have a negative 4 times 3 plus 6, which would give us a negative 6. So it looks like column 1 is complete. Once column 1 is complete, now we move over to column 2. So now I'm focusing on this. Anytime we start a new column, the first thing we need to do is to get our 1 in place. So for us, it makes most sense to take a negative one-third row two to get a new row two. Once again, that tells us that only row two changes. So I'm going to copy row one down. 
And if you look, when I multiply a negative one-third into each entry into row two, my zero is where it should be, my one is now where it should be, and I end up with a two uh, over to the right. All right, so we have the one in place. Once you have the one in place, now you want to get the zero by using the one. So I'll take negative two, row two, plus row one, and which gives us a new row one. So once again, this tells us that only row one changes. So my row two, I'll keep here. I'll take each entry in row two, I'll multiply it by a negative two, and I'll add it to the entry directly above it in row one. So the first entry, we'd get a one. The second entry, we'd get a zero. And for that third entry, notice how you'd have a negative two times two plus three, uh, which would be a negative one. So we've hit our goal matrix. Uh, and before I said this is our goal matrix, uh, and if it doesn't make sense to you now, it will in just a minute. So what I would encourage you to do here is remember, Gaussian elimination uh, is doing essentially the same thing as regular elimination. We're just ignoring the variables. So now if we go back from its matrix form into its standard form uh, with our variables, it might make a little more sense. So the first uh, row says 1x plus 0y equals negative 1. And the second row says that 0x plus 1y equals 2. Well, that tells us that x would equal negative 1 and y would equal 2. So the point of intersection that we found for the original would be the point negative 1, 2.